Good morning, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. I'm doing my morning chores, including feeding the fish. Uh, and some people have asked for an update on the trout pond and how they're doing. So I'm gonna go down there. I'm actually gonna throw a line in the water and try to catch one of the smaller ones, see how big they are right now. I'll talk about some of the feed I use uh, to feed the trout on the pond and uh, maybe talk a few of the other things about why the water looks turgid or brackish right now and uh, draining and whatnot. So here we go down to the pond. Okay, I've had a request to go fishing. This is for you, Mike, and a few other people. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of power bait on. The sun beaming down in here right now is not going to help out. I actually want to catch a smaller one because I want to see how big the fingerlings that I put in a little bit ago are and uh, get a good sizing of that. Interesting story. I'm not saying it's going to go that easy today, but when I had more fish, my pastor's son wanted to go fishing and, he, you know, he's not a fisherman so we brought him up here and he his son threw his line in the water on the first cast he caught a fish on the power bait and another fish was so hungry and it, the split shot weight looks like uh, somewhat like the feed that I normally throw in so another fish swallowed this and he swallowed it deep enough that it couldn't come out so he reeled in on his first cast a fish on the hook and a fish on the weight brought two fish in they were both about 12 or 13 inches long he was pretty excited about that okay Got done messing around with my power bait. Let's go give this a try. Whoa, lost that sucker. You're not gonna survive that way, buddy. Okay, I think this is one of this year's fingerlings. Um, and it's already, goodness, six, seven inches, well, seven or eight inches long. Let's get him back in the water. Just so you know, handling a trout with dry hands and that much out of the water, his survival rate is probably not very good. But anyway, like I said, the sturgeon can eat it. But uh, anyway, that, that uh, fish looks like it's about seven inches long. I didn't measure it, but uh, those fingerlings tend to grow about an inch a month to begin with, and then they slow down for about the first year, and then they slow down. Uh, I, this is just a, stand, a regular rainbow trout. I did, there used to be a Miller Ranch up in Amboy, Washington, grew Donaldson trout which uh, is a hybrid uh, rainbow trout, and they would grow six, uh, an inch a month for the first 16 months, so uh, they got big, and then they would continue to grow from there. And then they also provided triploid, which I had one year of that, where they are asexual, so they don't put their energy into sex organs, and they just grow, 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 and I've had some about 30 inches in here on those, but uh, this is not the case. So these these will probably continue to grow fairly rapidly to about 10 or 12 inches, and then they'll slow down after that, but they will continue to grow. So for the feed, my fingerlings that are probably about four or five inches long right now, I use Alquimax 400. It says it's a starter. Um, I believe the fish now at about five inches long can eat the 600 which is much larger. But the Aquamax 400, I believe they say, is pellets 3 seconds uh, size. So it's a little under an eighth of an inch, whereas the uh, Aquamax 600 is a quarter inch thick. Significant difference, but I think the little fish are now able to eat the larger um, pellets. The Aquamax 600 is pretty easy to find, uh, usually. There's a few stores in the area around here in the Southwest Washington that have uh, 
have it in stock. For me, Wilco usually has 600 in stock, Orchard's Feed Mill does. But if you want to get the smaller uh, pellets for starters, it is harder to come by. Usually or only Orchard's Feed Mill that I know of has it around here. Uh, when I bought the fingerlings this spring, the supplier of the fingerlings agreed to sell me at cost some of the feed that's the coffee ground size, the really small one, like the 200. Uh, if you're going to start a pond and put some fingerlings in, uh, you might find that getting uh, the smaller size, the Aquamax 400 or 200, is hard to find on the shelf. So I would order, before you get fish, I would order that a month in advance or something around there so that you know that you can have the uh, feed for them when you get the fish. But the smaller pellets are harder to find. So you can see in my hand here the difference in size. The little ones are the Aquamax 400 starter and the bigger ones are the 600. In raising my 400 fingerlings of trout, I had the starter feed from the company. I've had this one bag of 400 and um, I still have maybe a quarter of it left. Uh, it'll be running out in the next couple weeks. But uh, when I'm done with this, the fish will be large enough to all eat 600 and I won't have to buy anything else, which is good because the 600 is less expensive as well. Let's see if the fish are ready to feed on this corner of the pond. Here they come. Fingerling. The big boys are a little more aggressive this morning. So on the far end there, the pond is gently sloped in where the blackberries are growing in. As it gets deeper and deeper as you come over here, and if you get to the bank right in front of me, if I take a big step out right here, I'm in nine feet deep of water. So there's good depth over here. Uh, this pipe that you see right there, that's a six inch PVC pipe. I've got sticks and everything going on it. I have a raft that I can float out there and clear that off. There are multiple sections of that pipe that I have threaded, uh, male and female end. So I could take off a one foot section, then I could take off a four foot and another four foot section. So I can raise and lower the water to whatever level I want. Uh, I have completely drained the pond once uh, to uh, clean out some stuff on the bottom. And, but there's other times if I want to do work around the edges, I can lower it a couple feet or whatever I want and then raise it back up. But, so this pipe that you see there, it's, there's a horizontal drain pipe running across here. I have a 90 degree elbow in the pond and it shoots straight up nine feet. And so uh, whatever level I have there, the water, Whatever it rains or flow comes in from the nearby creek or springs, it rises over the top of that pipe and just goes down in there and drains out. So it stays at that exact height all year round. You may notice that the water looks a little bit brownish or brackish right now. Uh, when I was learning to do this, the people that were teaching me how to do ponds years ago said there's a, a certain time of the year you'll know when it happens. Uh, the water goes from really clear and then when it gets to a certain temperature, it turns brackish. It's like the water turns over and they call it turgid is what they're, the term that they're using. And uh, the, there's a lower oxygen level and uh, it gets a little bit brownish. It's still clear, but there's a little bit of that hint. At that point in time, they said I needed to put a siphon hose in there, and which I did. I have a hose that's in there and it goes over the top of the dam and down the other side. And water is being sucked off the bottom of the pond every day and running out because they're saying at this time of year it's not raining and whatnot the the water is not circulating and so it's getting deoxygenated on the bottom and fish can actually drown in rare cases but they can actually drown because there's not enough oxygen in there so by siphoning off the bottom uh, it continues to pull that out so the fish will stay healthy when it starts to get cooler and starts to rain again here uh, it'll change and the water will get clear again uh, not because there's fresh water, but just because of the temperatures and it'll stay clear through about the middle of June. It does it every year. Uh, you know, the, my stream actually flow because of all the logging roads and whatnot up above flows clearer in the summer and there's fresh water coming in, but the water turns this way. Whereas in the winter, uh, there's silt and everything coming down the roads from the logging 
and whatnot, but the water will still be clear because we don't have this effect going on. But it's usually late June, early July, or more mid-July that the water turns like this. So thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead, where Christmas trees are my business, teaching including horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects like uh, creating ponds and raising fish are my passion. Uh, we hope to see you again soon, and uh, if you like, subscribe, make comments. I love to hear comments just for the fun of it, but all those things help my channel. And uh, I thought I was just doing this for my horticulture class, but uh, it's gro actually growing into an actual YouTube channel now. So any anytime you could like, subscribe, share, that's fantastic. Hope to see you again soon. I went to go throw my feed in, and it, my fling it out here, I was in a hurry, and my bucket flung out of my hand and it's floating in the pond. I'm going to see if I can put a treble hook on and yard that sucker out of there before it sinks.